the government sounds great, and it's certainly better than big government or even medium-sized government. But if you think about it, my predecessor has taken the unfortunate position of advocating for more taxes and less freedom. Maybe not compared to now by any means, but certainly compared to the amount of freedom and the lack of taxes that would be possible in a truly free society. I want to speak to you today about freedom, about principles and the fact that principles are unchanging. They are natural laws as immutable as gravity. The specifics of a situation or a system never change a principle. Sometimes people like to say, not everything is black and white. Well, that's certainly true. But black and white exist. They are facts. My tie is white. My suit is black. Those are facts. I've been a journalist and a videographer for about the last two years professionally. And the first thing I learned in journalism school, the first thing anybody learns when you pick up a camera, is how to white balance. Basically, you point the camera at something white, and you press a button. That button tells the camera, hey, this is white. It's pure white. If you don't do this first and the camera has the wrong idea of what white is, then everything it does from then on is wrong. It looks wrong. It feels wrong. Anybody can tell that the color's off. It's like an off-key singer. Even if you don't know music, even if you don't know your scales, you can still tell when somebody's singing off-key. To think that government is necessary is a failure to white balance. While white in this discussion is good, it's right. It's what's necessary. It's necessary to know what's truly right in order to know what's truly wrong. You have to know what's white to know what everything else is. The true white, the white we should be using to white balance our metaphorical cameras, is the non-aggression principle. The lack of using violence to solve problems. Governments have been self-defined as a monopoly of violence in a given geographical region. They are not white. They are often black and maybe off-white at best, if that. So what is the non-aggression principle? What is it that the whole world needs to use to white balance? What the world needs to see reality, how it really is? Well, it's very simple, and we already know it for the most part. The golden rule is a perfect example. It's an oversimplified example, but the concept is the same. The concept is this. Any aggression against you and the extensions of you, i.e. the fruits of your labor or your property, any aggression against you or your property is wrong, always. That's a fact. It's a principle. It's a principle. Specifics, specific pieces of paper can't change it. Specific articles of clothing, i.e. uniforms, can't change it. Even a 99.99999% majority can't change it. I define aggression as any involuntary taking of property or harm to property. Of course, self-defense is not aggression. That's an important distinction to make. Aggression can't be considered, or self-defense can't even be considered violent. If you prevent your own murder by killing the attacker, you prevented any violence from occurring. Since you have a right to self-preservation, preservation, while your attacker, being the aggressor, had no right to attack you. In fact, he voluntarily chose the risk that he might be injured when he chose to attack you. Now, government, in all of its various forms that I've come across through historical or current examples, governments are based on the violation of this very principle. That's the root. They rely on violence for their very existence. I'm sure many of us have heard the phrase that no man is safe when Congress is in session. If you can get past the indoctrination you've had extolling the wonders of government, then you can see that government is nothing more than aggression. It's the opposite of freedom. Examples? Well, let's start with taxes. Taxation is really just a euphemism for theft, quite literally, at gunpoint. Taxes aren't voluntary. They can't be called voluntary. Even uh, the so-called one-cent voluntary tax is not voluntary. If I refuse to pay it, then the government agents would come to collect those taxes. If I continue to resist, they'd send more government agents with guns. And if they would try to take me to jail, I resisted that attempt to kidnap me, I could possibly be shot. And taxes are also used to exercise social control. Think of taxes on cigarettes, taxes on machine guns, taxes on soda or salt, taxes on labor, taxes on the productive members of society. Taxes are usually targeted to mold a society, to try to shape it. This implies that society, governments think that society is theirs to mold. It implies that a collective abstraction has the main property interest or ownership of individuals. 
And this concept is utterly irre irreconcilable with freedom. If any decision is made for me without my consent, then I don't truly own myself. And I am the property of whoever a bunch of people chose to own me without my consent. And usually that person is a sociopath who thrives on power and seeks control over people. In fact, the quest for power in a government system is incentivized. Theft in a government system is incentivized. Whoever brings the most stolen goods to his special interests or voters will remain in power and even has the chance to be rewarded with more power, which would give him more of an ability to steal more goods. It's not benevolent for Congress to give $7 billion for free medical care for 9-11 survivors, though it seems like a really noble cause. Because Congress must first steal, counterfeit, or steal from the future by acquiring debt to get that money. If Congress critters really wanted to be benevolent, they would start a private donation for these 9-11 responders. So next time John Stewart's on a soapbox about this, you can tell him, Come try to steal that money from me yourself and see how that happens. <laughs> Not even a specific, albeit noble, or even desirable end can justify an immoral means. Not if the means includes violating the non-aggression principle. Taxation for the so-called public good is yellow, not white. Healthcare, welfare, Medicare, they're all wrong because they rely on the premise that theft is okay. They make theft seem right but only to those who haven't white balanced. Any argument that government is necessary is in direct violation and stands against the non-aggression principle. If you claim that government is necessary for roads, commerce, education, or defense, you are claiming that theft is necessary for those things to exist, that aggression is necessary, that violence is necessary. Either violence is wrong or it's not. It's white or it's not. It's not white and it's not right. People are willing to pay for, trade for, and produce the things they need. That's the